Hey folks, Nass here. Another episode of Medieval Dynasty in our hard mode challenge series. So we ended up going and talking to Dieter uh, in the last episode and learned more about Unigost and Jordan and what actually happened with Jordan and what Dieter saw. And now we're on the Unigost story seven. We have to go, we have to go confront Unigost. However, I think we're going to have to do some other things today because um, I have zero wood, none there, and I just checked and I don't have any logs uh, in here. Yeah, zero logs. <laughs> so I need more firewood because we don't have enough firewood. Let's go into the management. Our demand is 772.7 and our current wood on hand is 480. So we're going to start having some pissed off folks. So uh, I think I've got to go and chop some trees down. Let's call Miss Donkey. Where's she at? Uh, Miss Donkey, there you are. So we're going to have to go up and we're going to have to go chop some trees. Uh, now the food... We're going to have to make some food as well, but I think I think the uh, firewood is going to be the biggest deal right now to try and get that fixed. Because I didn't go and chop any wood last night, which, bad me. <laughs> Don't get hit by the tree. Watch out for that tree. Whoops. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to load myself up um, with a load of wood and then go and turn all of that into firewood. And then I can turn around and go into the food storage and make some meals. So let's chop these few trees down here. There we go. Let them finish falling over. We could chop them up into logs. Pick them up, pick them up, pick them up. Pick, pick them up. And chop that one into logs. What did I do? I chopped down, what, five trees? And we'll chop this one into stuff. Now, we don't have a whole lot of time left uh, in this series. Uh, I believe confronting Unigost is probably going to be the last of it. Because I don't I don't think this particular story, like some of the other storylines, uh, they're like 10 chapters long. I don't think this one's 10 chapters. I think 7 is the last. If I'm not mistaken. All right. Am I encumbered? I am encumbered. Uh, let us go into Q, let's go into here, and we're going to turn all of that into firewood and go drop that in the resource storage, and then we can go make some meals. Nope. Hold E. I do this every time. This is like the only game I played where you actually have to hold the button to enter... Uh, a vehicle. Like everything else, you just tap it. Tap, tap, tap. Alrighty, let's get off of this donkey here. You'd almost think I was drunk the way I was driving. Alright, let's go throw this stuff in here. 88 firewood, that's really not a whole lot. Um... Feathers, clay, fur. Keep the sticks and straw on me for now. Let's go into the management screen. Wood, yeah, okay. So we got plenty of wood now. All right, let's go make some meals. So we've got. We picked up some onion. We actually bought quite a bit of onion so we'll take those that's 60 onion I think that'll get us 30 meals uh, so let's get 30 meat get some of the oldest meat first uh, let's see that was two this is 17 that's 19 
What is this going to be? I think this is going to be one too many or something. We'll just take the whole thing. It'll be fine. That should be plenty. Because we got to turn that into roasted meat. And yeah, let's grab us uh, some plates. Wooden plates are going to be down near the bottom. Nope. There we go. Wooden plate. Uh, there's... Nope. 20. And... 30. I think 30 is all we're going to be able to make because of the onion. Now, let's come over here and let's roast us up. We'll just go ahead and roast 32. There we go. Now let's go to the cauldron and go to other. Go down here to meat and gravy. 20? Oh, 20. Yeah, duh. <laughs> it's three onion per meal. Not, I was thinking it was two. Okay, no worries. We, we make 20 meat and gravy. All right, let's go drop that stuff back in here. I think we already had like 10, 13. We had 13 meat and gravy already. Uh, let's go ahead and drop these 20 in here so we don't have to worry about meals today. We'll drop the roasted meat in there. And we're okay on water. That should be good. Alrighty. Alright, we got our food and water. Uh, we don't have anything in the field that we can actually collect today. Let us head over to... Unigost and see about talking with him. Now, as I've been mentioning in the last several episodes, uh, this series, you know, is pretty much going to be over once we've done all of the chapter quests, which Unigost is the chapter quest. And then uh, I'm going to work on starting a new series for Medieval Dynasty. Now, if you guys have ideas that you'd like me to do or try for the new series, please leave them in the comments below. That would be awesome. But let's head over here and talk with Unigost. And we're going to hop over here. Yeah, Mr. Unigost, we need to have a discussion. Unigost. Hello there, dear Resimir. Hello. How's life treating you? Like a father. <laughs> what do you mean? Strict, but fair, I guess. Uh, very mature of you to say. Uh, let's see, you are, you really are growing. Seeing more and more of those shades of gray, huh? Uh, I do, but, but gray still consists of black and white. Uh, things are still good and bad, right and wrong. It doesn't change that. Uh, I never said it does. Tell me more about my uncle. Hmm. I'm not sure if I have time for your stories. I'm certain you'll find some. All right, maybe one story. Ha ha. I just remembered a good one. Me and Jordan Walred uh, were trying to catch this rooster who swallowed a bunch of pearls and... Tell me about his death. Oh, Rasimir. I've told you already that he passed away in his sleep. But people don't usually just die during sleep, do they? Time is merciless. Jordan was an old man already. Did he die of old age then? No. A disease? Some ravaging sickness? No. Then how come he didn't wake up the next morning? Rasmir, I have never lied to you. So why start now? Hmm. I knew this day would come. Finding words to describe it. To explain. It seems abstract. Undoable. But the silence has been, been burning a hole in my chest for far too long. I did it, Rasmir. I killed my best friend, my brother. Don't call him that. 
I understand your pain, your feeling of betrayal, but I'm begging you, believe me, that it brought me no pleasure whatsoever. Why? It was complicated. All right, we got a couple of choices here. Was it greed? You wanted to be the Castilian instead of him. Was it jealousy? Living all those years in Jordan's shadow, the sense of inferiority must have been constant for you. Or option three, was it vengeance uh, for how he toyed with Kestrel for robbing you of your one true love? Uh, knowing his feeling about Kestrel, I'm thinking it's more about her. But let's check. Let's do number three. Was it vengeance for how he toyed with Castrell for robbing you of your one true love? If you're looking for a reason I hated him, you found one. But I didn't kill him out of hatred. What he did to Castrell was awful, but he didn't try to be cruel. Besides, every part of this love triangle was hurting someone. We are all to blame. What about the baby? You could have been the father. It doesn't matter who was the father. This beautiful baby boy didn't draw even one breath of air. His life was over before it began. That's the real tragedy. It was yours, Castrell told me. You're right, it is. We're going to stick with that. May he rest in peace. We have some more options. Was it greed? You wanted to be the Castilian instead of him. We already read that one. Was it jealousy? Living all these years in Jordan's uh, shadow. Uh, was it vengeance? Okay, so we've already did that. Uh, let's ask him about jealousy. It wasn't easy being, being rather Jordan's friend than myself. But I didn't blame him for it. He was a star, bright, shining, always in the center of attention. It was his nature, not mine. I was comfortable in the shade, safe. And it was my fault for getting too att attached to it, so much that I was afraid of leaving, leaving its comfort. Didn't you envy his skills, his mind? Of course I did. We all did. Gordon was a genius. Who wouldn't want that? The question is, who would kill for it? Probably many, but that wasn't the case for me. I was always proud of being able to know him, to work with him. Alrighty, so then, was it greed? Not at all, son. I'm not your bloody son. You're not my family. Jordan was. Forgive me, you're right. I never cared for the title, nor the job that comes with it. I only did it because somebody had to, and I tried to make a good name of Jordan. And I tried to make the good name of Jordan live on that way. Uh, pick up the responsibilities he had left. He didn't leave them. You tore him away from them. So why... Yes, I believe I did. So why did you do it? Out of fear of Jordan's doings, of what he could become, after he killed that man in Navis, I, I stayed with him when everyone else left, but I couldn't stop thinking about what he did, how little it bothered him. He was angry at them for breaking up he was angry at them for breaking up the pack, but he didn't see his fault in it. And what was what was the worst, he didn't even seem troubled by taking a man's life. That's when I started wondering, he was done, he has has he done that before? Jordan didn't want to stop the mission. I convinced him that it was time for it and that we should move to the valley. I thought we could put all the all of what happened behind us. Just rest and try to find happiness in the little things. But Jordan had a restless mind. For him not moving up, 
not breaking another barrier, was torture. When he arrived here, there was only a couple of villages. We built ourselves a house in Gustovia. <clears throat> Excuse me. I truly believed that this would be enough, but not for Jordan. A week had not passed when he declared that he wanted to travel and meet the king and that he planned on doing it alone. Two weeks later, he came back as the new Castilian of the valley. He moved into his own house, for appearances, as he called it. Since that moment, he was getting more and more distant from me, from anyone, really. I'd been seeing him walk around, walking around Gustovia like a true leader, shaking hands, hugging babies, making small talk, always with a big smile on his face. He really seemed great, if you don't know what was hiding behind that smile. We were living right next to each other, and yet sometimes we were talking only a couple of times a year. He was afraid of me, afraid of his, of his moral compass. He didn't want me to restrict him anymore. Conscience was a burden, so he, did, he got rid of it entirely. And that's when his worst side took control of him. I didn't see any shred of sincerity left, just a constant mask. Years went by, he was going more and more. He was, he was going more and more often to meet the king. So one day, I started a little investigation, and what I found out sickened me. Jordan had become the very thing he swore to eradicate. A festered lord whoring around with his, with his filthy friends. Getting rich off of people's misery, he was benefiting from the wars selling weapons. Shaking hands with rapists to be, to be in their good graces, he had to be stopped. It took me months, years, to get, to get to it, and I feel responsible for every wrong that he had done during that time. I should not have hesitated, but killing my own brother, it felt unimaginable. Yet, I knew I was the only one who could do it. I sneaked into his house during the he during a heavy rain. He was sleeping so peacefully as if all the sinister thoughts had left him for the night. I was staring at his face for what felt like ages before I took out my blade. Made one clean cut and it was over. He didn't even open his eyes. And just like that, it was done. You know what's going to happen now, right? You will pay for what you've done. Alrighty, I do, and I, I'm not going to fight it. Whatever you decide, I will accept. Alrighty, and this is where we decide what actually happens to Jordan. Uh, let's see, option one, I understand you, your reasons. Uh, it requires a strong will and a good heart to do what you did, but the blood has been spilled. You should leave the valley and never come back. Uh, let's see, you don't deserve forgiveness. Killing your family just because you think it's right. But I will not let you die a self-proclaimed martyr. You will live with the guilt of what you've done until the time gets you itself. You are banished from the valley. So one and two are kind of the same thing. It's just two describes <laughs> in a little more detail. Uh, let's see, number three. You were right. Everything is soaked in gray. I don't condemn you for your decisions. However, you took a man's life. And by the law, the king, by the law of the king, it is punishable by death. Now that one, he did. He took a man's life on his own. Uh, he, was, he was his own judge and jury uh, for what Jordan did. I mean, he wasn't—he he wasn't even brought amongst his peers of of what uh, what Jordan was doing. Uh, let's see, number four, you're a murderer. None of your lies will change that. The only thing you deserve is death. You will be hanged for what you've done, and I hope you will never rest. Now, number four literally turns Rasimir into the same person that Unigast was. 
when he took Jordan's life. So I'm not necessarily sure that number four is, is the best option. Now, I can understand Unigast's reasoning for why he killed Jordan. I mean, Jordan, from what we're finding out, was not the person that we were led to believe by our mother, who clearly did not know her brother and what he had done, you know, because of, of the distance between them and things like that. They haven't seen each other in years, all of that stuff. So, number one and number two is where we let him go. Number three, he still dies. Ah, uh, man. But see, this is tough. Number three, you were right. Everything is soaked in gray. I don't condemn you for your decisions. However, you took a man's life, and by the law of the king, it is punishable by death. Now... This makes it sound like you he would be brought before the king's court kind of a thing. Because we we've, we've talked we mentioned, you know, and by the law of the king it is punishable by death. Um But Rasmir, I I mean uh, I don't take Rasmir as a killer. Like I mean obviously when if push comes to shove, I think it would it would happen. However, number two, you don't deserve forgiveness. Killing your family just because you think it's right. But I will not let you die a self-proclaimed martyr. Uh, you will live with the guilt of what you've done until the time gets you itself. You are banished from the valley. I believe this one is probably the better option. Banishing him from the valley, so he's he's not allowed anywhere in the valley anymore. He has to live with his guilt because he clearly has immense guilt. Uh, but we're not necessarily taking it to the king to just kill him off. Because, to be perfectly honest, I feel that that would be an easy out uh, for Unigost. I kind of like him living with the, the guilt of knowing what he did. If he decides to take his own life, that's all on him. If he's going to try and take the easy way out. But I don't think that we should give him the easy way out. So I think I am actually going to choose number two for this one here. You are exiled from this land, Unigost. Leaving this peaceful place as a murderer and a liar shows your true colors. You tried to poison my mind just like you did with Jordan's. But that's not going to work this time. I've seen through your deceit. You deserve no forgiveness, only pity. Your hands will never be clean. Unigos Story 7 complete. And as you can see in the top right hand of the screen, we do not have any more uh, chapter quests. Go into the journal here. You can see that there are zero chapter quests. So we are complete. So we've actually completed all of the chapter quests um, and the story quests all in 11 years. And it's winter, so we're actually going to be switching over to year 12. So we've done it in 11 years, which is, I think, pretty good on hard difficulty. Now, granted, we didn't do a ton of hunting. We had some exciting moments <laughs> hunting some of those Wysen. So that was, uh, this was a pretty good little series. I enjoyed this quite a bit. But again, if uh, if you guys have ideas for a new series that you would like to uh, like me to consider doing, definitely leave those in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate it, and uh, I'll start working on putting together a, a new series for Medieval Dynasty. 
you know, maybe uh, maybe list how many days during the season that you would like me to do, uh, whether you want the difficulty to be hard or easy, or if you want it to be more of a, a city building, decorating kind of a series, which decorating is not my forte, but I would definitely tackle it if you guys wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, leave me those ideas in the comments below. I greatly appreciate everybody joining me for this series. It has been an absolute blast. And remember to make sure to like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'd greatly appreciate it. And we will see you folks in the next one. You take care and happy hunting.